Hi, and welcome back to Painting with Yuxam. My name is Yuxam Wan, and I'm gonna be bringing you through a painting of a silhouette of a wolf in front of a full moon. I'll bring you step by step, showing you what paint brushes to use, the tips and techniques to get the desired effect. So on the canvas, what I'm gonna start by doing is mapping out where the moon is. And instead of trying to really just get a, uh, the round shape, sometimes you can use different tools in order to save yourself some time and heartache. So I just used a plate and I, draw, uh, I drew a circle to start. So that's where that full moon is going to be. So now we use acrylic paint and I like to add just a little bit of water in order to start. And I'm gonna start over on the right hand side and add that nice bright blue down here. And I'm painting a little bit over where I have that outline of, of that circle. And the reason I'm doing that is that even when I come in and paint the moon, I don't want to actually have a little line where I'm going around like this because you'll actually see those brush strokes and it'll look really unnatural. It'll stand out. So as I'm adding the paint to that area, especially around the moon, I want to go over it so that the brush strokes are nice and even and that you can see that it continues behind the moon. So I'm adding a bit more paint here, but it's not going to stay that blue, but I want it as my base. So one of the things you can do is instead of mixing the paint on the palette all the time, what you can do is come here and just add, once that blue is on there, I'll go and get a little bit of that black and add it right on the canvas. And by doing that, I'm blending that black into the wet paint that's already there. And that'll give you a nice seamless kind of blend of the two colors without having a big line or trying to actually have a grade, a different grade of, of color as you go up. If it ends up being too black, you can come here and add the blue to it and it'll bring it back to a bit more of a blue color. So now I'm just gonna go into the black for the top. I'm adding a bit of water just to be able to thin out that paint. One of the thing is that when you have a canvas, it's actually material with a little bit of primer and a little bit of paint in it, and that's called gesso. And that covers uh, the canvas, but it's still got texture to it. So it's almost like a material where you see the threads and then there's a little dip in it. When you're painting, you can see all that uh, texture come out especially when you don't have enough water. So if you add water to it, then it actually allows the paint to go between all those threads on the canvas and give you a nicer coverage. So it's all about getting that liquid on there. A bit of more liquid paint. So as I get back down to the moon, I really wanna come here and start adding that blue again because that's where I want that a bit more of that color right around there. And I don't need to cover all the way to the bottom in this painting because we're going to have some trees and so on and so forth down there. So I'm not too, too worried about getting that. So I'm going to wash off my brush. And then it doesn't have to be perfectly washed off because I'm gonna use that same technique where I added the black up here. I'm gonna use that same technique down here. So I'm gonna go pick up a bit of the white and bring it right onto that blue. And you'll see that it'll just lighten that right on the canvas and give you a really nice misty effect without having to actually try to uh, come in with that light blue all the time and figure out how you're gonna get that mix. If you see that your blue has dried a little bit, grab a little bit of that blue again, come over it, and then you'll be able to 
really blend it to get that nice variation in the color. Just gonna make sure that that bottom corner has some on there. So now I still know where the moon is, but I don't necessarily see the outside, but what we're gonna do is fix that in just a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a really easy way to make clouds. So I'm gonna wash off that brush, wipe it off on my trusty napkin. If you see that there's still color on your napkin, it means that there's still paint in your brush. So what I do is I, I'll go wash it again and really try and get all that color out of there so that when I do come in with another, let's say lighter color, then I don't have that, that blue coming through. So I'm using the three quarter inch or the one inch uh, brush that's rounded and I'm gonna go get some of the water and get some of the white on there, but I'm gonna go right into the blue so that I have blue on the end and a little bit of white. And an easy way that we're gonna do the clouds is that we're just gonna make circles. And instead of trying to paint circles, what I do is I take my brush and I just turn it like that. And that will give me the first impression of how to, where I want that circle. So I want the back clouds to be, uh, to be blue. So that's why I'm using this. And I'm over, so I'm gonna keep on doing the circles, but I'm overlapping them. The harder you press, the bigger that circle is going to be. And because there's, the paint is mixing as I go, uh, I don't have to go in and mix different colors again. So I'm just going to sometimes make the bigger ones and smaller. And I want those back clouds to all be that, that darker blue a little bit for the first layer. So making clouds is all about layering. If you're in a hurry uh, and you wanna make just clouds with one layer, chances are they're not gonna be as nice as when you take your time and you really build them up. So that's gonna be my first layer there. I'm gonna make maybe just a few darker ones that come a little bit higher. And I'm just overlapping all those circles. And that will give you that first layer of clouds. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna start just a bit over the moon because I want it to look like those clouds are a little bit behind, especially the darker ones. And I'm just turning my brush to get that circle. That way you're not worried about, you know, how do I, how do I get that bubble look on that, on that cloud? I'm just turning the brush and it'll just naturally give you all those circles. All right, as I go, I didn't wash the brush, so it still has all that blue in it, but now I'm just gonna, every time that I wanna do a layer of clouds, I'm just gonna go and pick up a little bit more of that white so that when I come in, I'm going to go over these clouds, but I wanna start them just a little bit lower. And it'll pick up some of that wet blue paint and actually turn them, it'll give you all those different shades again. So some of them I want to be bigger, some let's say they're smaller. And again, you'll see that what I'm doing is really just building so that first layer is there and then the second layer, I'm just building on, on top of each of those clouds to give that impression that the darker clouds are further behind and as we get closer, they're getting a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side of just running the brush around in a circle. That way you don't have to worry and they're nice and even and it'll be really pleasing to the eye. And once you get good at this technique, it, it does actually, uh, you can go quite fast and then change all the different uh, tones and shapes to have them a little bit longer and whatnot. So again, all I did, haven't washed my brush, went and got a little bit more white, just down 
from this is the dark first layer second layer and now with the lighter one I'm coming back in and just going over with those circles some of them smaller some of them bigger and just building up those layers of clouds oh. So one of the things is that if you're in a hurry to make those clouds, this is not the best technique. But it will give you a really nice result. All right. So I'll do one more layer on those front ones. I want that nice big one there. And see, even if I run it on each side. The thing is if I want to make it a little bit bigger than what my brush is, all you have to do is use that as your first example and then you can come in and make it a little bit bigger. When I'm painting, if you notice here, we have that textured effect again. So we have the white paint that's thick, so it's just rubbing the front of all of that uh, those threads, but you don't actually get the paint in between all of them. So all I need to do is add a little bit of water and when I do that, that's when that paint will thin enough to go in between. So if you see a lot of those, that, that canvas mark and you don't want it, especially if you're using acrylic paint, just go and get a little bit more water to thin out that paint and it'll, it'll help get that coverage. And then the last one over on this side. And don't be afraid to go over the clouds that you already did. That will give you some, as long as you have a few of those top showing of the different layers, you should be fine. There. So that's the basics of the clouds. So when I did the background, you're gonna notice that I didn't do straight strokes. So I didn't want it to be up and down like this and I didn't want it to be horizontal because then you start getting that, those lines that'll drag your eye and it really changes your background. So what I did was I did the back and forth in order to get some light and dark areas. And here, there's a couple of spots where you still see some of uh, the canvas, especially when it dries, there might have been some areas that had some paint, but then when it dried, uh, the air actually affects uh, if the paint was just over it and then that water, the, the surface broke a little bit and it'll leave those little white spaces. So every once in a while as your canvas is drying, you might want to come in and just see and make sure that those spots are covered. So now that my background is more or less dry, it doesn't take very long for acrylics to dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that plate again and I'm gonna come in with a brush with just a lighter, just a light blue. And I'm gonna cover up that area again of where I had more or less where that moon was. And I'm just gonna paint again, just to get an outline. You don't need a lot of paint because it's just to get that shape back so that now we can go over it. So I'm using the same brush, which is the rounded one. And I'm gonna start with some white because I want the under, uh, the under painting to cover these edges and to be able to blend in with, uh, with the white. So it's gonna pick up some blue and that's fine. I'm not too worried. All I'm doing is getting that underpainting to get the shape that I want and really get some coverage on the edges. So I'm, and I'm not even too worried if it's a different shade of white or a different shade of, of a bit of blue, that's fine because we're gonna be painting over it quite a few times because the moon will also require quite a few layers. The more you play with it, actually, the nicer the moon tends to get. Even if you see a bit 
of the edge of where you added that paint because it was in the light blue or the white and it, there wasn't a lot of paint but just enough it'll just look like there's a bit of a glow so I'm not too worried even if you see a bit of that so now I'm going to go and get quite a bit of that white there's still a bit of blue in my brush and if you hadn't washed your brush properly this is the kind of thing that all of a sudden you'll be doing a, um, a cloud or a highlight and then all of a sudden instead of getting uh, pure white you're going to get one of those colors in there and if you used orange or red and then all of a sudden you have a streak of pink in the in the top of your sky that's uh, that's usually what happens when you haven't washed your brush properly so when I'm doing the background I always want to uh, keep it in that circular brush stroke because if I had the horizontal or the vertical brush strokes in the moon it actually flattens it out so you want it to be to always come back in and get that round stroke and that will help keep that image of that impression of having uh, a three-dimensional object so now a bit of water I'm going to go right into my dark blue because in the bottom of the moon I want it to be darker because the sun's going to be somewhere over there so this side of the moon will be light this side is the dark side of the moon so now I'm using the undercoating the white paint that's there I'm using it to my advantage and it'll blend in with just that blue and give me all those different variations without me having to work for it and again you'll see that just like that it adds the darker one there by keeping those strokes round and the lighter one there it gives that effect of it being rounder I'm going to pick up just a bit of black to be able to come in on that last one adding it to the white and the blue it'll give me a really nice shade of that darker shadowed blue so here's how we do the, the moon is that it's all a matter of doing the brush strokes so now as I go in because my brush is round when I press down it's actually the top line will be round so I'm just going in and dragging it down a little bit if you just punch it you're going to get just like a treetop and that's not what we want we really want that rounded brush stroke so I'm coming in and I actually have to drag it down a little bit and I'm just going to keep on going a little bit everywhere in those brush strokes the, the little almost petals and if the blue shows up and if the darker black shows up as we add layers of it I'm going to start clumping them into almost little clouds on the moon and what that's going to do is add that texture of having the craters and the mountains that are on the surface of the moon and sometimes I'll paint you know something to look a little bit more like a face so you get the man in the moon but this time we'll just we'll see how it turns out every time it's a little bit different so I add a little bit of white and that'll add some highlights I'm trying not to put too much of that dark color on this side so if I go and get some of that blue and add it there and then the more you add and just go over and over and over it'll blend that paint to get that really nice texture on the moon of what is right the top portion of it and give you the impression of all those valleys and nooks and crannies on the edge you don't want to have too much you want to always keep it with that round look so that it looks like the moon continues on I'm just going to add a few maybe darker spots up here and maybe right around there to try and balance so that it's not too heavy or dark in one spot but that it actually flows a little bit better and I'm not going to worry too much about the bottom because I will have a mountain in front of that if all turns out well 
So the last thing I'm going to do now is wash that brush. If there's a little bit of paint, it's fine, but I'm going to wash it so that I can come in with the white because now the edge should be a little bit drier. So I'm just going to use my brush on the side and I'm going to come in and add that white because I want that edge of the moon to really stand out and not to have been too affected by all that shadow that I put in. So I want to keep it white on this edge. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm adding some of those valleys and turn them into the edges of them into a little bit more of that mountain. Just by adding the white on the edges, it'll make them stand out. So and you can just keep on adding all kinds of texture to it and you'll see that the more you play around with it as it dries and as the paint blends and things like that, uh, you can add all of those on there. So I'm going to let that dry while I show you how we're going to make the stars. So in the stars, there's a few uh, tips and tricks that I like to give. And uh, the first one is to vary the size and the placement. So you don't want to start and make stars all in one area because you'll end up clumping them. So you want to go to all the different areas of your canvas as you do it. The other thing is if you make some bigger and some smaller, that will also help give a very natural looking sky. If you have an area where you've made a star and you don't really like it, you went too big or your brush slipped, just take your finger and run your finger over it and that will, you, I want to rub some of that paint off and then if you come back in and just add a little star in between, what that ends up doing is it looks like it's, it's glowing. Now that my moon's pretty much done, we're going to start with the mountain. My big brush, it's, and I'm just going right into the black because it's a silhouette. So I'm going to start about two thirds down and all I'm doing, and it's going to pick up a bit of that moon and it's fine. So I'm going to do the first one and I'm not making it completely straight because you want it to have a few of those bumps on it. So I'm just wiggling my brush a little bit. Get some water so that it's thin and that you have, oop, not too thin. And you, it's easy to spread. And then once you have that, when you're filling it in, don't just fill it in horizontally. Uh, that your brush strokes, remember, brush strokes matter. So then I'll always try and use that to my advantage of going in the shape of whatever I want. I'm just going to press down on here. So I'm keeping it at the top, a nice peak. And then as I get down to the bottom, that's when I can flatten out into more of a horizontal where the, where the earth is down near the bottom. Once again, make sure that you have enough water to get the coverage but not too much water where you're seeing your canvas through it. Now that we have that, you can see that it picked up a little bit of the highlight and that's okay because what I actually want to do is come in and just on that first edge, I'm just going to lighten that to show that there's a little bit of light that is reflecting off the moon. Now I'm going to come in with that same brush and I'm going to turn it vertically and all I'm going to do is in front of there to make a tree line, I just put it down and as I bring it down, I press 
and that'll give me some of those triangles. Then I'll make that tree line going all the way up to the mountain. One of the things is that you don't want to have those trees all soldier-like, all the same. So you want to have some higher and some lower, some thick and some thin. Same on this side. That's where my tree line started. So I'm going to come in and just drag those down to be able to create a really quick forest and nobody will really know how long or how little time that took. The last piece is going to be that wolf. And what we're going to do is uh, with a pointed brush, it's one of the bigger detailed ones, I'm going to start just by painting its tail around and then its hind quarter that goes there. I'm going to come up, paint its shoulder as a circle, and then add its back coming down to the hind quarter. Fill in his chest. The chest of a wolf has that rib cage, so you want it to be a little bit more square. And add that circle for its head. Have a little area here for its neck to come in. Here. The thing when you're doing silhouettes that's nice is that if you want it to be bigger or smaller, it's easy just to paint over. So the jawline comes right from the neck. The first one's going to come out like that. And then the second one for the top of its snout is going to be here and then I'm just going to widen the bottom get that where his eye the forehead is come down I'm going to use a bit more paint so I can get that first ear and then the second one make his hind quarter maybe just a little bit bigger and then the front leg supporting it Right like that. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of black on this side of it. To blend it in, you can play and add a little bit more of that shadow as paint dries, you can get another coat of that dark black to really get that shadow on there. So I'll probably add another layer in a minute or two once that dries. And play with the shape a little bit. But more or less, that'll give you your impression of the wolf silhouette with the full moon. So I hope you enjoyed painting with it. Uh, with me today and we'll see you next time for another painting. I hope you enjoy.